Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City, and today I'm doing some product photography. I get asked a lot about shooting other than models, shooting food, shooting product, whatever, and I decided to do something really cool for you guys today. I have all my data lights out, and I thought I would play with all the various cool things that we have and show you guys how to light up something. So I've actually got here a, um, actually I could probably show it here. I've got here what is essentially a statue, or a bobblehead, I guess, of Zeus, right? So this guy here is kind of a little bobhead. It was given to me as a gift um, uh, by Andy Cahill. Thanks, Andy. Uh, who, by the way, is the person that got me into shooting videos, so you guys can thank her or be mad at her, whatever. Um, and uh, <laughs> I've had this thing for a little while, and what uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to photograph this thing. And I thought, hey, this is Zeus. You know, he's the the you know the the, the god of like lightning and thunder. He's at the the you know in the Greek uh, pantheon. So uh, the first thing I did was I wanted to have like thundery clouds. That was kind of my idea. And what's actually kind of interesting about this is I originally had this other idea about how I was going to shoot him, and I noticed when I looked at it that he's technically looking down, which kind of makes sense if you know much about the you know Greek pantheon. You know, they're on a mountain. So I had to position myself slightly low. Um, and, and again, I wanted this thundercloud kind of look, so I thought I'm going to use all uh, warm light, tungsten light, balance for that, and then I'm going to use my HMI. So over here I have a, a 200 watt HMI from Dato, um, Dato Light. This is basically bouncing into their eFlex system, which gives you the ability to kind of throw these really cool dappled patterns of light. And I thought, man, this would kind of look like, you know, thundery clouds behind him. You know, you know the vibe of it without going too crazy. But one issue that I have is that I'm working with something that's small. I don't, I don't want to like light up a whole room with this thing, right? Because of the, where I'm at. So what I did was I made sure I used a long enough lens. So I'm using a 150. This is the 150 from Eric. It is a macro lens, although I'm not getting super close. I'm using a 150 because it compresses my background. It's going to allow me to shoot, you know, against this like relatively narrow board and fill the whole frame with it. So you guys can see, you know, that that's the case. Well, you'll see once I line it up that that's the case. That the board is going to be completely covered. So. Once we have that in place, we're basically going to start lighting them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come here. You guys can see through my camera as we go. So I'm on a tripod here, but I think I, I was basing my exposure around 60th or 100th of a second um, F5. And I'm going to frame it up first. So I'm using the Nikon Z6. And I'm not going to worry about focusing it too much right now, but he's more or less right there. And the very first light I'm going to add besides the background is I'm going to add an overhead light. I wanted him to look kind of intimidating, so I wanted to throw some like shadow down on his face. So I've got this uh, Dato Soft here, which again is a tungsten light, so it's going to be warm. But I have my white balance set that way. And I'm basically putting it directly above him, just like that, right? That's going to give us some light coming down. But if you notice, some of that light is hitting the background. Um, so what I want to do is angle this so that's not the case, right? So we're actually going to tilt it slightly towards camera. You could also use a grid uh, to give yourself some uh, control, but that also increases contrast, so I thought I would just tilt it. Sometimes the simple solution is just to do that. So this is giving me now this kind of uh, moody, angry, you know, dark eyes in here. Now I'm going to focus. I'm going to punch in. So again, I'm just punching in so I can see really well. And I'm just going to come in here. He's looking at me. And there we go. It's funny, I'm so punched in using 150, you can see it jiggle. Good, good, good. So there he is, and that's what we have so far, right? He looks pretty decent. He's lit up. But what I'm not liking is I'm getting some of this blue light hitting him on the side. So I'm going to eliminate that by using a flag. So I just have a flag right here. I'll put it right here. And I'm basically just going to move this guy in to block any of that warm, that cool light, I should say, from hitting him. So I'm blocking the light. This is not negative fill. This is just blocking the light. I mean, none of that HMI light is hitting him now. Right, that should clean him up a little bit. Yep. Now he's nice and cleaned up. I'll get that little thing off his face so you guys can see. So I'm going to now mess around a little bit with the background. I don't really love the patterns making. So that's the cool thing about this. You literally just flex and move it to get what you like. 
It's a little too dark, I think. I wonder what happens if I do this. What I'm doing now is I'm throwing a live view on and capture one. There we go. That way I can actually see the computer from here as I do it. Oh, yeah, there we go. For you guys, I'll give you whatever looks best in the final video. But for me, I'm using the Capture One so I can see it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's like tweaking it a little bit at a time, some clouds moving in the way I want them to. And again, because I block the, the white light on him or the, or the cool light on him, I don't see it. That's actually really cool. Done. That looks nice. Close that down. All right, so next, though, I want that shadowy pattern on his face, but I feel like it's a little bit too dark and not really that great. So what I'm gonna actually use is I have another dato here. This is the, uh, the DLHM uh, 4300. You guys have probably seen me use these a bunch of times. These are my first data lights I ever had uh, and some of my favorite. They're really nice, really, really focusable. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to it a couple of accessories. I've got the, uh, the DP 1.1, which is a projection attachment with a 150 millimeter lens. And I'm also, it's fitted with an iris. So in addition to that, I'm going to drop that in. That's my light shield. The light shield, guys, is so that the spare light doesn't bounce around. Okay, so again, this is a dimmable tungsten light. I'm just gonna fire it up so you guys can see. Typically when I'm doing this, I will crank the light to its full power so I can see where I'm aiming it. I'm gonna put it right on his face to fill in a little bit, but clearly that's too much even with the projector on there. So what I'm gonna do is use the iris and close up my circle. Just like the part of his face that I want. Just like that. Let me look to the camera to see what it looks like. Now, there's a lot of ways I could do this. Clearly it's too bright right now. Um, I'm just gonna look and dial it in by eye at this point. You could use a spot meter, there's a lot of things you could do. But I feel like this is one of the better ways to do it. Now I am actually gonna add something to it. So that looks about right exposure wise, but I'm gonna add something. I've got here on the front of this, the eye kit. And this is often used for eyes, but, uh, and this is his eyes, right? It's got this piece of diffusion, it's got glass diffusion that kind of scatters the light in a really pretty way, especially, uh, you know, for this purpose. And it's gonna actually, what I'll do, so you guys can see, I'm gonna turn the exposure up a bit so you guys can see it again. And you'll see how it scatters it. See the difference there? Without it, with it. Scatters it, makes it really nice. Now I'm gonna look here, and I'm literally just adjusting my exposure until it looks good to my eye. So I'm, this is one of the advantages here about using the mirrorless camera, is that I can do this. If I was using a DSLR, I could also put it in live view. Um, what I'm doing is I've got my live view set to basically show me the exposure as I'm going to get it as, as a, a final product. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, good. So that's fine, right? He's, his face is lit up, but it's not very dimensional, right? It's kind of flat. So I have over here, I'm going to have to walk around the set. I'll be back in a second, guys. All right, so over here I have a... Uh, a DLED 7, which is a, uh, an LED light, clearly, um, fitted with barn doors. What I'm gonna do is give him an edge or separation light. Um, and this is, uh, the reason why I'm using this light over here is because it's by color and I'm gonna set it to daylight balance so that his edge light or his backlight is gonna be cool and kind of cut him out, right? And I'm basically just gonna dial this down. Oops, that's the color, so you guys can see the color if I want to mess with it. I could make it match, but I don't feel like that's as strong, so for me, Dialing it up to, let's, let's, do, we'll just do 55 to match it. We'll be good. And then I'm just gonna dial my exposure in to where I think it looks good. Probably about right there. I want it to be a little bit hot. He is Zeus after all. Walk back around. I'm gonna take a look through the camera. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. Cool, cool, cool. That gives him nice separation. Actually, it's hitting the lightning bolt nicely. It's hitting his shoulder nicely a little bit on the, the platform there. His face looks lit up nicely. Um, everything looks pretty good, um, but I have another light, and you know why not use it when we can add a little extra detail? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and I've got another one of these DLHM 300s here. This one's fitted with the, with the DP 2.1, which is the other projector. 
Um, this projector has built-in framing shutters, and I'll show you guys how that works. I'm going to fire this up, and I'm going to aim it at the word Zeus, and I'm going to use my framing shutters to just bring that word in. I'm getting his toes a little bit, which I don't really want, so I'm just going to move these in like that. I don't really want his toes too much. Tighten this up just like that. I'm getting a little bit at the bottom there. I think that's okay. There we go. I don't want to be super obvious with it. I just want like a little touch. Put this in. Yeah, it's all about subtlety with this. So we've got that, nothing, and then up. See? What you want to do is once you're staring at it for a second, you want to forget that you had even done it. That looks pretty good. Okay, so overall this is looking pretty nice. I'm going to look through the camera now. Again, which is kicked. And I'm going to line it up. I'm going to refocus. Yep, that actually looks good. Look into the camera position. I'm going to punch in here. Moving up, there he is. So just like when shooting people, you want to focus on the eyes. Okay, good. So I'm going to take a shot like this. See how we like it. Nice. All right, so now I'm going to capture one. We'll take a look. It looks a smidge dark. It's definitely, definitely sharp. Let's do this. Zoom 100%. Yeah, that looks nice. I like how it falls off, but then the Zeus still sticks out. This looks good. I have detail even here in the whites. But again, it looks a smidge dark, so I think what I'm gonna do, I actually like the amount of depth of field I have, so since I'm shooting with a constant light, I can just adjust my shutter. And I'm gonna go down to a 50th. Take another shot. There we go. That looks a little bit nicer. Maybe somewhere in the middle. I'll try 60. Yeah, I like that. That's giving me a nice, clean shot with plenty of detail and everything there. Cool. Let's go here. Let's go here, check our focus. You can see, right? Look at that. Even there, the Zeus is actually slightly out. So, I mean, if I want more in focus, his eyes are perfect. I could probably give myself, because remember, I'm tilted up slightly. So I could give myself more depth. I actually think that's fine. But if you, you know, if you want, it's easy enough now to just dial that in. So I can come over here. Let's say I want to give myself, so I'm at F5, so I'll go give myself two stops. So I know if to do that, I can just now reverse that way. The exposure should stay the same, which it did, and we should get a little more depth of field. There we go, Zeus. And he's sharp there. In fact, we can even... Yeah, that looks really good. I'm liking it. So there you go. So could I have just taken one light or put it by the window and made a shot? Yeah, but you know, one thing about shooting product photography is if you're trying to learn light, this is a great way to do it. Experiment, right? If you don't have all these different lights like I have, think about why I'm doing the things I'm doing. You could be using mirrors to bounce hard lights to get little small spots. You could be using cards to block light. So there's lots of different ways. The better tools make it more efficient and easier. Um, and certainly if you do this kind of work, it can be super useful for you to do. And using hot lights for this is fun, fun because you can watch it and look at it and see what you're doing as you go without having to worry too much about, you know, oh, what's the flash exposure? I can literally just look at it on my screen and I know what it's going to look like and it looks great. Um, think about color, think about composition, think about how lights cut things off, what you're going to use it for, and that will help you create kind of a cool product shot. 
So uh, be sure to follow me, uh, Daniel Martin Photographer. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV. Click the subscribe and the bell, and you'll have all that good stuff so you know when we have new videos. And I'll see you next time on set.